we also have an electric car here. This is a 1914 Detroit electric. There were many companies that made electric cars in the early days, both in the United States and in Europe. I used to live in Cleveland, Ohio, which was home to the Baker Electric and the Roush and Lang Electric. When President Taft was elected, he was an Ohio boy and he wanted to take an Ohio-made automobile to the White House with him. He selected a Baker Electric and a white steam car, both of which were made in Cleveland. The Baker Electric is considered to be the first automobile in the White House motor pool. But for some reason, the Detroit Electric is the best known of the electrics. Now, the Stanley steam car sold for about $750 in 1903. This car sold for about $3,500 in 1914, which was a lot of money. It was a, enough to buy a nice house in those days. If you wanted to drive an electric car in 1914, you had to live in a city. The car must be driven on paved roads. It's a very heavy car. It has a bank of lead acid batteries in the front and another bank in the back. You could not drive it on those horrible, um, muddy, rutted roads that were common out in the countryside. And you had to have access to electricity for the charging station that would have been set up in your carriage house. And before, really, before World War II, Paved roads and electric lines stopped at the city limits. So this was a town car. These cars were quite popular with wealthy ladies because they were very easy to drive. Um, John D. Rockefeller had one of these cars. Henry Ford's wife, Clara, had two of these cars. And Thomas Edison had one of these cars. The car uh, has some very interesting features. It utilizes curved glass in the windows. They were just perfecting the technology to mass produce curved glass when this car was made. It also has a very interesting uh, interior configuration that they called salon seating. You drive the car with a tiller as you did the Stanley. Like the Stanley, it does not require a transmission, it's a direct drive system, and it has dual controls. So you could either drive it from this front seat, or if you wanted to take passengers out for a ride, you can fold the front controls up vertically out of the way, swivel the front seats around to face the back, and drive it from the back, as most people did. This car, like the Stanley, has been freshened up for the museum and repainted, but it still retains its original brocade interior as well as its original uh, mechanical systems. The wheels are wooden spoke artillery wheels. They call them artillery wheels because they're very similar to the wheels that would have been used on a military caisson to haul armaments. Uh, they're lacquered but they are wood, and wooden wheels were very common on cars up until the probably the early 1930s. When we talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of the electric car, the advantages are that the car is mechanically quite simple, it's smooth, it's quiet, and it's very easy to operate. The disadvantages are high cost of ownership, limited utility. You can only drive it in the city. If you want to go touring out in the countryside, you would have had to have had a, a gasoline-powered car. Um, high cost. The car cost about $3,500, which was quite expensive. In 1914, a Model T Ford was probably about uh, $400, maybe $450. Um, the top speed on this car was only about 22 miles an hour, which was adequate if you were driving it around in the city center. Uh, and we believe that the range on a charge was about 100 miles. So you would charge it overnight on your charging station the way we charge cars today. And uh, 100 miles was probably quite adequate for the way most people used these cars. But again, 
uh, you could only use it in town and you had to return to your own charging station because there was no network of, of uh, chargers to, to uh, boost your charge if you were out shopping or something of that nature. The lights on the car are electric. You have side lamps here and headlamps in the front. They made electric cars until about 1935, but not very many. And they didn't ever really change the styling. I've seen a 1934 Detroit Electric and it looked almost identical to this car with the exception of the roof which was about six inches lower and it had more modern looking wheels on it. Otherwise it, uh, it looked almost identical to this car. Electric uh, delivery trucks and milk trucks were common in big cities until about the time of World War II.